Pranjwal Shastri, Emeritus Scientist, Astronomy and Astrophysics. Uh, thank you for waiting so patiently, ma'am. Uh, now that we know what the payloads essentially are, now that we know why we need to study the sun, I, I'd really want you to touch upon the aspect of how Aditya L1 essentially, uh, you know, given the dynamic and the complex nature of sun, its ability holding the solar system together with its gravitational force. I mean, uh, that's that's a real strong gravitational force. Now, the complex um, complexities, the dynamic of the sun's activities, how will real-time observations be carried out by Aditya L1? And how will that be sent back to the Earth? Uh, would you like to throw some light on that, ma'am? Uh, so, uh, the last point, how will it be sent back to Earth? That is uh, a very well-established uh, technology communication between uh, can you hear me absolutely absolutely you're with us okay so communication between uh, satellites telescopes which are out there and the earth is uh, a very well-established technology uh, nothing special about that the l1 point enables constant communication uh, between the earth and the uh, Aditya satellite. Mm, so mm. Uh, that is one advantage of the, that is the second advantage of the L1 position. Uh, another thing to note about L1 is it's a position of uh, equilibrium, but it is not a stable position. So it is a position where uh, the gravity pull of the sun and the earth sort of cancel out. However, it is sort of like being on a very uh, uh, flat, flattish, kind of hill uh, so right. a slight nudge can uh, take the satellite off so it constantly needs corrections and it's in a small orbit over there mm. it's not mm. uh, exactly stationary in the frame of that the sun and so it is so you have the sun the earth and this uh, these things which are there in l1 which are moving around the sun along uh, with the earth and there are several uh, telescopes there there have been several telescopes there in the past it's a very it's a very popular uh, destination, so to speak, uh, for hmm. Hmm. Um, astrophysical telescopes. Um, so the communication part is sort of fairly straightforward. Uh, why we need it there, uh, why we need to study the sun, um, to add to what has been said, uh, the sun is just one of uh, billions of billions of stars. We have a few hundred billion stars in our Milky Way, and similarly there are many billion galaxies like our Milky Way, all of them containing stars, but the nearest other star to us is four and a half light years away. So there's no way we can get very, very sharp images of even that nearest star, which is Proxima Centauri. The sun is our best case. So the sun is a star which we can study in great detail. Uh, also, mm. it has mm. it has direct impact on us, uh, both in our daily lives and because now we depend so much on uh, electromagnetic waves outside of visible light, as was already mentioned, through our technology, communication and so on. And right. the sun is a huge magnet, basically. It's a very, very big magnet. And uh, it's uh, the plasma, it, it, it constantly ejects these very high power uh, ejections of plasma, uh, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. come all the way uh, to the earth. And so we need to uh, be aware of that in order to sort of preempt any catastrophes with respect to our uh, de dependence on communication technologies in the modern world. Uh, this is referred to as space weather. So. Uh, one of the satellites, one of the other mm. missions, which is in L1, uh, which is a collaboration between NASA and ESA, uh, does do a lot of space weather studies in addition to doing uh, cutting edge uh, scientific studies. So uh, in terms of the scientific studies, uh, the main uh, telescope, which actually originally drove this mission, even before it was visualized as an L1 mission. Uh, I have to say, I'm a scientist who is not involved in the mission, so all my comments are as an outsider. So right. this is called a coronagraph, and essentially a coronagraph means that you blot out the light from the sun so that you can see what is around it. So mm. it is like, mm. you know, putting mm. our thumb, uh, Absolutely. the sun is... Uh, overwhelming us, we put a thumb to block out the sun so that we can see what's around. And uh, the reason is that the sun has this uh, stuff that we call the corona, which is a very, very high temperature plasma, very tenuous, 
it's visible during total solar eclipses. Right. Uh, it's very, very beautifully visible. I mean, if people would see it in India, there's a tendency for people not to see it. But if people would see it, it's a very, very beautiful phenomenon. But there's a lot of physics that we don't understand. It's at very, very high temperatures. And we don't understand why that high temperature uh, how that high temperatures uh, you know what uh, you know what Prajur, why, so, why i asked you uh, that particular question was because uh, you know i mean there is increasing interest in space i'm i'm just uh, trying sorry, to i didn't hear the last bit i'm 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 trying what i'm saying is that you know there is growing interest in space what sets aditya l1 mission apart from all the other missions that have reached l1 that particular lag range point so th there are a lot of missions in L1 which are not studying the sun. So uh, there is uh, there is SOHO, which is the NASA ESA collaboration, which is studying the sun, which is at L1. Uh, Aditya has this coronagraph. So the coronagraph will do uh, what are called spectral studies of the corona, like I said, to understand the physics and understand how the high temperatures in the corona created. Uh, Aditya will also have a camera which will take images of the sun in All the right. ultraviolet, meaning full images of the sun without blocking. Uh, that is similar to SOHO. But the exact frequencies at which, uh, the exact ultraviolet frequencies at which the images will be taken is somewhat different from what SOHO has. So the ultraviolet range we define as uh, roughly from about 100 nanometer, hmm, which is hmm. uh, up to about 400 nanometer, which is just below what the atmosphere allows in. The atmosphere does allow in some ultraviolet light. SOHO studies the extreme, which is simply blocked by the atmosphere. Aditya will study some uh, study the ultraviolet images at some intermediate uh, range, and the interior of the sun is not uniform. It has layers which are at different temperatures, and as I said, the sun is one big magnet. So explaining what we see uh, the sun do, how its light changes, and uh, how these super energetic outflows of plasma which find their way to Earth are created, and so on, requires um, you know multi pronged. It seems like it, it seems like Aditya L one has its has its task cut out for it. Um, there's a lot uh, that the Aditya so L1 has to one achieve, doesn't it? I want to make uh, Absolutely. in response to what you said earlier. Hmm. Uh, so uh, I want to emphasize that science knows no boundaries. So science is an enterprise, it's a global enterprise, it's a public good. So as scientists, we don't know boundaries. So the kind of data and insights that will be got from, hmm. for example, SOHO are used by scientists all over the world, including scientists here. Similarly, the, sci the science uh, data got by Aditya will be a global public good and will be used by scientists all over the world. So uh, that is absolutely, that, absolutely, uh, ma'am. I, I do concede uh, science is a uh, is a universal endeavor. It, it helps everybody. This is not, uh, you know, India's victory alone. Uh, Aditya Elwan is certainly going to be helping the entire universe.